Kid and I was talking to a real estate agent friend. They just closed a house finally for someone who had made 20 offers to buy a house. 20 offers. 20 wow. offers. Wow. So that's a lot of looking at houses and homes. And I think you'd get to a point where you're going, you know, I, you'd probably compromise somewhere along the way. Start, we need to tell you up front we are not a licensed financial planning, accounting or law firm. This is simply an education program which will give you factual information. We do not give any general or specific advice around finance, business investing, options trading or anything else. That is not what this presentation does. Please see a licensed financial planner when it comes to any investment advice you need. Now where are we traveling now? Well, let's travel over to New Zealand. New Zealand? People are what? leaving the place, apparently. I'm hearing this. I'm uh, the droves. Um, their unemployment, rate, unemployment rates are really, really high. Mm-hmm. Their interest rates have remained high. Um, their economic growth is anemic. Uh, and their government stats are showing it. And that's what's really, really concerning, that 131,200 people left New Zealand at the end of June 2024. How many? 131,000, just over 131,000. That's a big chunk. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you wanted to have a sooks in there, I'm sure. Yeah, I did. I did my best. <laughs> but this is the highest on record for an annual period. Right. And around a third of these are headed to where? Australia. Australia. Yeah. And you look at this and you go, wow, what, what, what's going on here? Um, of Can course- we have Manly back? I mean, come on, guys. Just give us Manly. Come on. <laughs> no, I, look, I actually, uh, on the weekend, as I've said before, I was down south on the weekend, and I met this absolutely lovely Maori fella um, in the in the barber shop. <laughs> yes, I was in the barber shop. That's funny <laughs> in itself. Uh, but, yes, while I was there, contemplating the fact that uh, which hair to get cut. No, I was there to get coffee, believe it or not. And he and I were having a conversation, and he was saying, this, 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 this Maori fella, really fabulous guy, and he's just saying, the smartest thing he ever did was get out of New Zealand, right? Because I said, well, well why did you go? Because, you know, I've got a lot of Kiwi mates and, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place. He said, because the economy is just tanking. Mm. And and he said that I don't want to raise my kids in a hood. I don't want that. He saw mm. the negativity of when the, the finance has that negative effect on society. And he said that it was damaging his children. So he got them out. And you know his kids are out there now. Instead of spending all their time on screens, all their time with with bad influences out there, no, now they're actually doing these crazy things. You know, kids on trail bikes and having fun and getting muddy and uh, learning and having to build resilience and all those good things. So you know, that's a little country town here in WA. Yeah. Lovely to see. Yeah. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of them, uh, people, uh, immigrants of of every sort of persuasion, are coming. And I would like to see if that's going to happen, then maybe hit the, the small towns, don't hit the cities. Well, the issue is, is housing here in Australia, yeah, all right? Yeah. All this migration that's going on, it's compounding the issue Completely agree. Um, in terms of cost of living for Australians. Uh, it's great if you load up with money and you're from overseas, you know, and you've got the money to buy and that sort of stuff. Yep. Uh, but what is that doing to our children uh, for, for many people who are just finding it hard to get cracked into that market and, and, and build a home. Look, there are no houses. Like, it is ridiculous. Even if you do have money right now, buying a house is yeah. just ludicrously difficult to do. As I said the other week, you know, I was talking to a real estate agent friend. They just closed a house finally for someone who had made 20 offers to buy a house. 20 offers. 20 wow. offers. Wow. So wow. that's a lot of looking at houses and homes. And it, I think you'd get to a point where you're going, you know, I, you'd probably compromise somewhere along the way going, I'm not, I, this house isn't ideal, but I, you know. Oh. You know, again, I, mean, I, get, I had this conversation really, really yesterday. Wanted. Look, Derek, stop reading my mind, or obviously, you know, <laughs> maybe he's got GPS on me. I had a conversation yesterday about someone who, uh, and they've, they've bought a home, and it, it's, a, it's a lovely home, but it's not mm. the one they wanted, yeah, because of the fact of just the time and the restraints of the money and all got to carry on. So, you know, and, and the, the one that they were very keen on, they, they had to make a decision basically because if you don't, you're homeless, right? Yeah. Yep. So they've had to buy a house. I mean, you're making an investment for 30 years on a home that you like the one down the street better. You yeah. Know? yeah. I think what might happen is once the building sector eventually catches up, you'll probably see a lot of people just swapping out and trying to find the house that really, really does suit them coming out of this. How long the Australian government keeps playing with the immigration numbers, oh. it, it remains to be seen. Um, we're seeing 
you know, there's just so much control going on in the government in relation to there's hardly any opposition stopping uh, these kind of policies coming through, uh, which is very, very concerning for Australians. Very much so. Uh, and I think a lot of it, that's reflecting in the opinion polls as to where they're at. Uh, yeah, look. Okay, it, great comment there. Can the government uh, fix the housing crisis? Well, you know, truth is, Damo, yes, they can. Again, it comes back to supply and demand. Uh, and you know, the, when they are restricting supply, right, and also, like in WA, we're having uh, our supply very much controlled by the eastern states, by venture capitalists in the eastern states, getting into bed with the uh, developers over here who are in bed. And when I say in bed, it is just, it's just off the charts. The relationship between the Western Australia Labor government and the developers here in Western Australia, it's criminal as far as I'm concerned. It's certainly immoral. It's completely immoral. But the way that they have, uh, effectively pushing out West Australians, everyday West Aussies work hard, you know, pay their taxes, all that kind of thing, are being pushed out of home ownership because our state government has got their 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 hands um, playing tickles with with developers, and they are selling to the eastern states, and away they go. Well, what I hope it does, and you know me, I'm Mister Positive here, <laughs> yeah, is that absolutely. it wakes a lot of people up and going, what's really going on? Yeah, with my politicians, what's really going on in the economies? Why am I finding? much harder to feed my family and people start getting empowered by that they go through the shock system of going what's going on go well, through the shock system of discovering what's really happening and at play once you get the facts and then going all right now how do i do it smart and well, and what okay. do i do and how can i also push back and influence society here well how i can push back is mr carter has just ah. <laughs> <laughs> i am so sick <laughs> oh, and you look at my friend you look absolutely oh, i feel real I feel rat shit, to be honest with you. But I, I feel <laughs> terrible. Anyway, um, sorry about my voice and the sniffles and all that sort of stuff. The, just going into the comment, sorry, I saw Dan's quote about, um, Damo's quote about can the government fix what's going on? <sighs> Maybe 20 years ago they could have, not now. Um, a lot of these property developers have too much control over the government. The government, the moment they step out of line, a lot of these big property developers are going to step on them. And the threat of losing power is too much. They won't do it. So one of the couple of big, I was watching a report, um, the Aussie Puntant did a really great video yes, on it. I'll see if I can hunt it down again. Oh, he's phenomenal. Uh, he's my oh. favorite YouTuber at the moment. Um, yeah. I have reached out to him, see if we can get him onto a show, but yeah, we'll just see what happens. Anyway, so there's over 4,000 property developments. So this is not a single house. This is 4,000 mm -hmm. developments which have anywhere between 20 to 100 houses in it. 4,000 right. of them. Council approvals are done. The land developments, power, water, all of that sort of stuff is approved and they're still sitting on it waiting for the markets to go up so they can make more money. The, How's that's not market manipulation? I don't know. Like, Yeah. You know, yeah. there's supposed to be now, price fixing rules in that? Australia. Who's in charge of that? Yeah. Travis? So... Who's in yeah, I think a lot of it is, and I feel um, really sad for people who are in this society who still want to live by the, the great Australian dream, going, oh, I'm going to buy a house in Perth. No, you're not. Not your first home. Oh, I'm going to buy one in Mandarin. No, you're not. It's too close to the city. You're not going to do that. Anything within, like, if you're an entry-level job and you want a job within a house within an hour and a half of the city, it's not going to happen. It's just the way society is these days. Your first home will not be the home you live in. And once people start understanding that everything's changed, you can't buy a house of two incomes in this society anymore. You've got to buy an investment property first, probably your second investment. Then you can even start looking at buying a house in the CBD, like in the metro area, sorry, not the CBD. Yeah. Okay. So well, it's, I, I, it doesn't I, I, happen. Or you go down the entrepreneurial route and mm -hmm. build a business and, and do it that way or get really smart on some sort of investment strategies. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Derek's yeah. course is fantastic for that. Talking of Derek's course, you can join Derek on his finance course at blueskyfactory.com.au. And Almost on that like note, I'm getting off the stream because the I need to yeah. cough. Thank you very much, mate. Look, <laughs> love to have uh, friends drop by. Yeah. It's, it's great there. Look at the tech of the world right now. Maybe we should just get, you know, everybody should have access to the screen. We'll let everybody uh, have a go. Why not, right? Ooh, um, that's a great idea. I do love the fact that, uh, yeah, look, those comments from from Damo, I mean, I disagree with, with Travis to a degree. 
Um, I, I believe that, quite frankly, they can change it, and they it would take. It's going to take a long time. It's going to need it's a release of land. That's yeah, the issue, but it's going Tra- to need. Uh, it, for- Travis and Brigade. Yeah. If a government released more land, yeah. no problem. It's not yeah. like we're short of land. That's right. That's right. But I will say this too. Okay, the comment he made about the country towns. Okay, please go and live in a country town because I'm telling you right now, your life is going to be better. Lifestyle is better. Now, if you can build a business or you can have a job that you can work remotely or, or anything like that, get out of this bloody rat race. A lot of the issues the country towns have right now, and that yeah. doesn't mean it will stay this way, but jobs. Employment. Oh, yeah, a lot of people I agree. are having to work three or four jobs part time or casual to make ends meet. True. Even people who've got land, in terms of they've got farms, yeah. often I've discovered if, if their farm is not making the profits they would want to, yep. to, um, you know, I've seen sheep farmers suffer from this. They've got two or three jobs in town to, to make ends meet to pay the bills in the meantime. Yeah, look, I've just seen a comment come up there from uh, Damo, and this is uh, about you know, whole tent cities and you know, in towns and. Uh, oh, where you grew up? Mate. Oh, wow, working class. Geez, I'd, um, I'd love some more information on that because uh, I mean that that is just horrendous to think about. Mm. Um, and I okay, maybe I'm being a little over romantic about the country towns, but I mean a lot of them have employment problems. Obviously, that's a big issue. Another big issue is drugs. A lot of small towns have really bad crack problems um, because of the fact that people are bored. Um, and you know, that, that well, they want to escape the pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Horrible, horrible stuff. But I'm, I, I just. Uh, you know, I, I see uh, every time I leave the city, kind of thing, and I go to these country towns. I don't. I feel a ray of hope that you just don't find. You know, here and obviously uh, with Edge now moving into the, you know, we're in a very nice area here. You know, in Mount Lawley, but you know, you go five down, uh, minutes down the road, and what you see is mm. terrifying. Mm. You know, it really, these people living in the streets, and it's very demoralising. Yeah, so, and it's been a wet weekend too. Eggs, very, very good point. Thank you.